is Dr. Benaducci. In this video, we are going over the bones of the pectoral girdle. And a girdle is made by bones that connect our limbs to the exoskeleton. In the case of the pectoral girdle, we are talking about the bones that connect our upper limbs to the exoskeleton, which are the clavicle and the scapula. Let's start by looking at the clavicle. The clavicle has two ends. And if we look at the clavicle right here, we see that this end of the clavicle is the one that articulates with the sternum. And the sternum is a bone of the exoskeleton. This end of the clavicle that articulates with the sternum is very stern is much more stern than the other end of the clavicle. And that's how you do to remember that this is the sternal end of the clavicle. When we look at the other end of the clavicle, it's not as stern. And this end of the clavicle articulates with this part of the scapula. This part right here of the scapula. And this part of the scapula, which is this one, is named acromion. So, the end of the clavicle that articulates with the acromion of the scapula is named acromial end. Again, you have the acromial end of the clavicle articulating with the acromion of the scapula and you have the sternal end of the clavicle articulating with the sternum which is a bone of the exoskeleton now if we look at the clavicle inferiorly we see a little bump and this bump is what we call conoid tubercle okay let's now go over the scapula the first step when you grab a scapula, is to identify anterior and posterior views. This is the anterior view of the scapula and this is the posterior view of the scapula. How do I know that? I know that because I see here the spine. And the spine is always posterior. And you can feel the spine in your back. Consequently, this is the posterior view of the scapula. Now, the spine can be used as a reference point because we see that we have a fossa, a depression superior to the spine and we have a fossa, a depression inferior to the spine. Consequently, these depressions were named supraspinous fossa, the one that's superior to the spine, and infraspinous fossa, the one that is inferior to the spine. And when we look at the anterior view of the scapula, we don't see a spine. So this view, this fossa, has to be the subscapular fossa. Awesome, you're set with that one. Now you can see that this is the spine, and the spine ends in the acromion. That will articulate with the acromial end of the clavicle. Now, when we look at the scapula laterally, guys, this is a lateral view of the scapula. We can see this fossa. And this is named glenoid fossa. And the glenoid fossa of the scapula is what articulates with the head of the humerus, okay? So that is the humerus, and here is the glenoid fossa. Now, this one, this bone feature is named coracoid process of the scapula. And what I've noticed is that students confuse the coracoid process with the acromion. And the way I suggest you to remember this is by remembering that the oids go together. 
So the glenoid and the coracoid, they go together. You see, they're basically united. They're very close to each other. And the acromion is on its own. So you remember the coracoid process and the glenoid fossa, the oids go together and the acromion is by itself. Please let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next video. Bye!